It's Friday, Friday, heartbreaking carry on Fridays. Okay, let's stop that already there. <laughs> well, Fridays are from now on the heartbreaking carry day, but the end will also featuring a... Oh my god, that was a quite a cool fight right there. Uh, moment. This time, uh, well, just, just, just a wait. Let's, let's wait. Let's just leave it there. And you're gonna see what it is when we get to it. It's quite cool. It actually happened on the live stream uh, this Wednesday with me and Behemoth. We are in our... Um, we, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get to it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop talking about it. Here we have a T-54E1 and it is driven by Sick Tank. And he is on airfield, as the introduction text said. And he has gone to a pretty good position here. He is able to... Um, well, if the, uh, the allies know that he's here, he will be able to support them by uh, them letting the enemy get around. Oh, something just broke there. It normally indicates that someone is going to peek here. But no one peeks, which is a little weird, uh, but he keeps on looking there just to make sure that nothing is going to pop up there. And oh, IS-8 coming there. Well, if the other IS-8 hadn't pushed like a crazy monkey, the IS-8 probably would have been sitting there still, and the IS-8 would have been able to have some support, but nope, now he's just dying, dying some more. I think he's one shot away from dying. I think he's going to die. Uh, here we see a T-21. He's being very awesome here. He's really being helpful here. He's shooting at the uh, the tier 9s and not penetrating them whatsoever. I don't... Maybe he just got to it and just doesn't really know how to be effective in it. But, but no, shooting at <laughs> tier 9 enemies, mm, not going to be so helpful. Um, he could have maybe gone a little bit more north, so he could be spotting tanks up there. He just learned a lesson there, and another lesson to the side from the RD, or from above. T-29 is going into the middle now. Hmm. Well, he's fired one shell. Oh, E-75. And he bounces the side of an E-75. What the hell just happened? He decides to retreat and reload, whilst the T-29, which obviously didn't really read the minimap or just the icons above the tanks, because he went straight for a tier 9 fight, and that's not really where you want to be in a T-29. Uh, tier 9s are pretty tough to penetrate with 198 penetration on that top gun on, of his. But uh, this T-54E1 can definitely put on some damage here. There's an IS-2 and a Tiger P. He's just going to put the hurt on the Tiger P here. The Tiger P bounces on him. Very weird. And he just goes to finish him off. And nope. He didn't penetrate him there. Weird. Um... I think I would have gone for the turret, maybe aim just a little bit longer, because we saw that Tiger P was go was aiming at him, but um, he didn't. And the other T-54E1 finishes off the Tiger P. It sounded like he took a few tries as well, like pew, pew, and then he killed him. And Sick Tank decides that it is the best option to relocate, which is a good thing. And you'll see here a spot which I actually... I actually didn't know that you could go up here. It's actually not that steep, as we can see here. And he gets up there, and he's able to really punish this low before thinking that he was in the clear. Boom. Low damage roll. High damage roll. Low damage roll, and... Low damage roll. Sadly, three out of four did very low damage. But, um, again, relocating here. And that's a very good thing. It's a very good thing for him to do. Um, relocating often. Not showing up the same spot again and again and again. Which just lets the enemy aim at your position. And then just wait for you to pop up. Which is 
never a good idea just uh, always try and see if you can relocate to get better positions against the enemy and and like this um, get the surprise get the jump on someone uh, sick tank I have no idea if he knew that he was spotted but he obviously was I have no idea what spotted him but uh, he was see a an, an enemy t54 e1 and he prioritized that one he spoke about it in the beginning if you watched if you if you saw that uh, I don't think he did because I just started the recording after it disappeared but he did focus that one out he wrote that so he probably used XVM to know that that was the uh, the best tank and it needed to be taken out which is a good idea it's a good idea uh, that's what I started using XVM for just to know which platoons to watch out for um, the wind chance not so much the wind chance will just make you a grumpy old man and no one wants to be that I don't want to be a grumpy old man already, but sometimes those 30% chances makes me a grumpy old man. A W set 120 bounces on this T54 E1, which is weird in itself. The other T54 E1 takes out the Aktiga 8. And oh wait. Maybe I shouldn't go nuts while well saying that one time. Aktiga 8. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Yak Panther is in the middle now, capping. And Six Tank is still reloading, but his friend isn't. And he takes it out because it decides to, I don't know, show its rear. Uh, a VK 30. 30? No, a VK. I was A. It's just in the middle, and Six Tank was going for him, but an E75 and a Super Pershing shows up. And the bottom plate of E75 is incredibly bouncy. So taking that one on head on is not a very good idea. But as we saw there, a sick tank actually bounced the E75. Ice 2 shows up with very low HP and hits sick tank, and bounces. And then he decides to relocate here, but he does get a shot into the, the rear here by the super pushing but again relocating 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 a very good idea and we'll see that again and again in this video or in this fight and it's it just pays off every single time to relocate uh, when the enemy disappears you disappear from the enemy radar as well so it's always a good idea to, uh, to relocate when you can see the enemy because then the enemy can't see you he misses the E75, which would have killed it and would have saved the T54 E1. Um, but he sadly missed. And now he's alone with the Arty, of course, against five tanks. One of them being an artillery. It doesn't look like the Lorraine is moving, so it'll be an easy target for the enemies. So here he did shoot and he got shot in the face there. Uh, we did see that uh, he always almost got half a clip reloaded, but there was only two shells left in his uh, APCR shells. So he decided to reload, re-reload, <laughs> and uh, he's now loading APCR shells. And we see how the enemy T-54 E1, talking about he wish he had killed him. And he is going to be bashing his own team for... Well, dying to a very great player. As we can see here, E75 rolls forward, dies. The Super Persian goes forward, hits it, hits the uh, hits Sick Tank. So he, he did okay. Um, but they both get annihilated. But they did they did go at the same time, which was the best option they had. Um, they should have pushed a little harder. So uh, because they knew he was reloading and running away. Stuff is being destroyed up there. And I think that's the... Uh, yep, that's the VK. And he decides to terraform instead of hurting Sick Tank. Ooh, he decides not to go even further back. And that was a very wise decision. He would have been already food if he had. Uh, the VK stops here. It probably should have kept going and see if it could have gone for the ram because it just got taken out very easily here. He now has seven shells left. 
for a Yak Tiger and an Arty. And the enemy T-54E1 is complaining about his team. The Sig Tank is writing that he was smart about taking him out first because he would probably have been able to change the course of the battle if you had been left alive, but he did show himself in the middle and that was pretty silly and stupid of him and that's why he got taken out see he's still complaining, still complaining, still complaining a Yagtiga is now capping and they have spotted each other oh, he's going through here, that's okay, he can't be shot the Yagtiga disappears, which means that he has also disappeared so um... what does he do? He relocates, yes, he relocates, because the Yaktiga will now be aiming at this spot here, so if he relocates to the other side of this cap zone, he will highly likely get the drop on the Yaktiga, and since the Yaktiga doesn't have a turret, it'll be just a fish on land. Can't do anything, and he'll be able to empty his magazine into it, and then run away for more. And no, he is not waiting for the defender medal. He's actually doing the smartest thing in the world. Um, yep. Boom. Boom. Oh, 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 just checking on the Yachtiga again and again, again and again, just to make sure that he has time to run away here. And he did. He got away. Good job, dude. Very good job. And again, he relocates. He goes all the way around. The Arty takes a... Ah, just shut up already, dude. Shut up. You died before all of those tanks because you decided to be open in the middle. Who's the noob here in this match? If he had stayed alive, he could have done stuff, but um, nope. In the open and took three shots. Three shots before he thought, mm, I better move. That's pretty stupid. He does apologize for it, but still. You can't expect everyone to be just as good as you. I complain about it too, about it too you know. Um, about teams not being able to carry a good game. Well, I don't even think he had a good game. He had three kills. Three kills. That's not very good. Oh, he ricochets! And the Arctica misses, so you just have to wait now and aim a fire. Gets it. Already misses once more. Very lucky. And now he has one minute and 45 seconds to find this one RD and kill it in one shot or ram it. Which would might which would which would which might end in a draw. Uh, we're seeing some lag here, lag issues. Uh, and we're gonna get one here in just a second. A huge rubber band. Right as he enters the water here. Splash! And then it goes. What's going on? What's going on? Fire the cannon! Yep, light speed, light speed. Mm. Yeah, he's asking for the uh, location of the RD, but the uh, the enemy T fifty four E one does have some dignity in him, and you won't reveal the location for the RD because there is that thing that is called a reporting, revealing allied positions. And that E75 could be reported right now because he just went F2. But uh, the T54 E1 knows that um, he, he can't. He can be reported. And you can see there, he says that in the chat. So a little bit of honor is in his blood, which is fine. But yeah, nothing will happen here. So let's just speed it up. And it ends in an unfortunate draw. Uh, but yeah, let's check those stats. And as we can see here, he got just an insane amount of XP and credits. Um, the credits is definitely for some kind of mission and event, but events don't show up in here.
because this is on the woodreplace.com site where I'm getting these uh, informations. But we can see here he did 9,393 damage. Killed seven. And let's just go into the details here. 35 shots and 29 of those penetrating. And of course, bunch of damage. Jesus Christ. He got hit 12 times and took a potential amount of damage of 3,835. That's a lot too. And he base defended for 174. And damage point detection wasn't that high, but... Jesus Christ, just look at that. Oh my god, oh my god. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a crazy amount of credits as well. Uh, some mission, but yeah, he still did a ton of damage. So that would have been a ton of credits as well. But yeah, that was a very heartbreaking carry right there. And um, yeah, thank you for sending it in, sick tank. But let's move on to something more positive. This is how I'm going to end every single heartbreaking carry from now on. We're going to have the very heartbreaking thingy. And then we're going to end it off with something very, very awesome. And as I said in the beginning of the video, me and Behemoth are in our VK4502 Ausführung B. And this tank, it's so underrated. It's so underrated. We are on, uh, what's it called? What's this called? Uh, uh, this map is called... This map is called... I don't even know. But we take out, <laughs> we take out the scout. And then we're going to move up here. I'm just going to speed it up because it is quite a ride up here in the hills. But yeah, these tanks are very underrated. Um, the armor on these dudes are just amazing. And you're going to see a ton of bounces on these tanks. Uh, you can side scrape like crazy in them because of the turret is located on the back. And you will see me writing fallback instead of fallback, guys. Uh, fallback, guys. Uh, we're here. And that was just like, okay, guys, pull back a little bit. We'll take some damage. But it actually turns out that we're going to go nuts on these dudes. The uh, Yaktiga decides to terraform a little bit and Behemoth decides to go and side scrape on this hill to begin with. I bounce the uh, the T-34 and I have six here. I just, I just, I, c I couldn't remember the the power of the gun so I decided to, uh, to just try and uh, take a shot there on the I-6. Didn't penetrate so now I know that. And this Yakti is very unfortunate. I think that I was going to do some damage to the dude behind uh, the pattern, but the uh, the Yaktiga would uh, be a much bigger and better target to take out. I could see the dude there again, but nope. And Behemoth goes out there, up there, and takes a shot on him, and bounces a shot as well. I go up there, I bounce a shot as well, straight into the track, and then I take out the pattern there. And then we're just holding our own corner here. Uh, Behemoth is fighting against the AT7. And this dude is bouncing on Behemoth. I-6 bounces on me. I set the T-34 on fire. The uh, I-6 decides to go out here and now do some damage to Behemoth instead of me. I follow him and shoot him in the side. I then attempt to do as much damage as I can in a ram. While Behemoth is taking damage from the S6. I am tracked by ramming him. Behemoth takes it out. And I turn my tank towards the T32. He's using HE. So I decide to shoot Behemoth in the tracks. But not really. Um, but yeah, using HE in a T32? I don't know what he's thinking. But he's dead. And look at this synchronized. Oh, that just looked pretty. If you didn't see it rewind right now and just see how synchronized me and behemoth turns and looks at that is3 he must be shitting his pants because that just looked awesome um, behemoth hits him i can't really hit him here i don't want to take the shot because then i have to reload for quite some time uh, but we do get up here behemoth hits him after i hit him right there i'm tracked and then behemoth hits him right there 
and then I repair my track slowly go forward a little bit the yeah, ice three bounce on me again and I kill him six kills we did have a little bit of backup but those tanks went for us they wanted to kill us they had a bloodlust going for us they were super enraged and wanted to kill us but yeah um, if you have any of these kind of moments where you just completely eradicate a big force of enemies either alone or in a platoon um, send it in and um, and call it uh, let's see fight for survive fight to survive let's see that's let's call that fight to survive um, send it to the rising sun at hotmail.com you'll see the address and the name on the screen right now but yeah let's end these heartbreaking carries with something positive every time from now on I'll see you guys next Friday